Coming up, moving back to Android from iOS. Next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Now, you're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here, your tech guy. Got a great question from Barbara. She is, well, she's got an interesting job. Let me uh, read the uh, email. Hello, Leo. Love your show. Don't know who else to ask. I uh, went from an Android to an iPhone 10 years ago after my Android phone was stolen. I wasn't crazy about the iPhone, but everyone told me I had to stay with the Apple ecosystem, so I gave in. I'm an architectural historian. Interesting. So documenting buildings via photographs is important. So is WhatsApp to talk to half my family who live in Spain and Canada. I'm looking at the Samsung Galaxy S10e. It has a headphone jack um, instead of an iPhone SE 2020. Um, but I wonder if I'll get into trouble transferring everything, especially music. I'm okay, but not great with technology. Thanks and best wishes, Barbara. University of Liverpool. Well, Dr. Barbara... Uh, first of all, don't let peer pressure tell you which phone you should use. <laughs> I use both Android and iOS. In fact, I have a crazy Android phone right now. I'm using the uh, the, the Galaxy Fold. That is, that is nutsy. A great camera. But you'll notice the S10e, also a great camera. In fact, probably a better camera than you would get on an iPhone SE. Uh, I, in fact, uh, unless you're getting the very most recent iPhone, I think that S10 is probably a pretty good choice. We did a show on iOS today on moving to iOS from Android, and I wanted to balance that out by doing this show talking about moving from Android to iOS. The truth is these days, almost everything you use, every app you use on your phone has an equal, if not identical, app available on the other side. Uh, it's only the small, unique, oddball apps that are only on one or the other. Some of the stuff that's on Android can't run on the iPhone, for instance, Wi-Fi um, um, mapping tools, because uh, Apple doesn't give it access to the strength of the radio and the Wi-Fi, but Android phones allow that. So there are some technical tools that You'll find on Android, you won't find on iPhone. And there are some app makers who just don't want to develop for Android. There's more money writing apps for the iPhone, so their apps aren't on Android. But the big ones, like, for instance, WhatsApp, they're available on both. WhatsApp will work exactly the same. You'll log into your WhatsApp account. All your messages will be there. All your contacts will stay the same. It's a, it's a really easy transition. Here's what I'm going to recommend for you. First thing I would do is... Uh, if you don't already have a Google account, is make one. You probably do if you have Gmail. Almost everybody has a Google account. And sign into that Google account on your iPhone. And make sure that you're synchronizing everything to Google. Contacts, calendar, notes, email, whatever it is that you use on your iPhone, turn on synchronization. That way it'll all get backed up to the Google Cloud. Your contact list, which is maybe the most important thing on your phone, I would guess, that'll be synchronized with Google Contacts. Your calendar will be synchronized with Google Calendar. Uh, I bet you're already doing that. A great many people do. I would guess even most people do. But if you don't, turn that on. There's one more app you're probably going to want to get, and that's Google Photos. You may be using Apple's Photos right now. It's okay to use more than one. Uh, Google Photos is a great tool. You've probably heard it's not going to be free uh, starting in June, but it's free right now. And everything you upload to Google Photos right now will stay free forever. So you can consider an archive of everything you've done up to June 2021. And at that point, you can decide... Do I want to pay for additional storage using Google's one uh, system, uh, formerly known as Google Drive, or not? And But you don't have to worry about that. The reason I want you to do it now, put Google Photos on your phone now, open it up, and let it 
back up all of your photos. It's going to make a copy of every photo on your iPhone in the Google Cloud. That's going to greatly simplify this transition. So you're, you're turning on Google synchronization for everything you can, including photos, using the Google Photos app. Now, when you get your S10, you're going to log into that same Google account. And lo and behold, your contacts, whoop, they'll synchronize in, they'll be there. Your calendar, whoop, it'll synchronize in, it'll be there. You've not lost any data. You will still probably have to log into WhatsApp and Facebook and whatever you know online sites you use. A little plug for our sponsor. That's one of the reasons I use LastPass, because LastPass synchronizes it between devices. I actually do what you're about to do all the time. I use Android and iOS devices all the time. I always try to use the latest. It means I'm constantly moving from phone to phone. And that's why this system of synchronization is so good for me. Store what you can in the cloud so that it automatically copies onto the phone. LastPass will do that with passwords as well. That's a really handy a uh, way to keep everything, that, you know, like your WhatsApp password available to you as you move around from device to device. It really reduces the lock-in on any given device. Let's see, is there anything else? Well, it really kind of is going to depend on any particular tools that you use on iOS. You're going to want to make sure that all those apps are available on Android. If there is synchronization available, you want to synchronize. I use, for, uh, as a good example, we've mentioned this before, if you use two-factor authentication, you might be using Google Authenticate uh, that will allow you to synchronize and then put Authenticator on your new Android phone and the accounts will automatically move over. So you'll continue to use that seamlessly. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. I, again, I don't know all of your use cases. You mentioned Photos specifically. It doesn't have to be Google Photos. There are other companies that will let you do this. If you have an Amazon Prime account, for instance, in the U.S., you can automatically upload everything on your phone to the Amazon Prime account. There are other ways, more manual ways, to get all of the photos off your phone. For instance, you can plug your phone in using the uh, lightning cable to your computer, Windows or Mac. Uh, on Windows, you'd use iTunes to actually transfer all the photos from your phone onto your computer. Um, on Macintosh, uh, you would do that using Apple's Photos. And then you can plug in an Android device and copy it back onto Android. That's a very manual process. And if you have a lot of photos, sounds like you might, that can be time consuming. I think the easiest thing is just to synchronize with Google Photos. Because now when you open up your Android phone, you'll, by the way, have two photos apps on there. You have the Samsung Gallery. Samsung, for some reason, has decided to duplicate everything Google does. But you'll also have the Google Photos app available to you as well. And when you open it up, you'll say, well, look, there's all my pictures. Those pictures are stored in the cloud. You can download a copy of them onto the phone, but you don't need to. You can you know, tap it, open it, examine it. Uh, you only download it if you're going to edit it or you want to look at it at a higher resolution. I think this is a great solution because you're going to be backing up your photos. That's another reason. Those photos, it sounds like they're pretty important to you. If the only place they exist right now is on the iPhone, well, then you're running a, a pretty big risk. Find another service that you can synchronize those photos to. And in almost every case, those services will be both on iOS and Android. Um, Shutterfly, a, a photo printing service also offers free unlimited uploading there are plenty of places to do that google's just the easiest one i hope that helps barbara i'm so glad you listen um and i, I hope i haven't made this too complicated i think bottom line is it's going to be a fairly easy thing for you to do uh, any trepidation you have about it will disappear as soon as you uh, you know, open up that new Android device, your beautiful S10, and start using it, you'll see that everything's been copied over from Google. And you can live your life, continue on. And you're going to really like the camera. It's really good. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. We know you can't trust your most valuable data with just any company. We trust LastPass with our identity uh, access management. We're not the only ones. They're a leader, according to the G2 Fall Grid Reports, a leading peer-to-peer -peer review site that provides unbiased user reviews on leading software solutions, over 100 policies and advanced security features. The out-of-the-box configuration is a perfect balance between security and convenience. The point is, you're in control. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. lastpass.com slash twit. That's it for this episode of Ask the Tech Guy. If you've got a question like Barbara did, just email askthetechguy at twit.tv. I get far too many questions to answer them all, but I'll answer as many as I can on the show. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy 
at twit.tv.